Game time, Kyrie Irving played the first two preseason games, did not go tonight in the rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals, which actually wasn't really a rematch of the Eastern Conference <laughs> Finals, but Cleveland was playing Boston, and Kevin Love was feeling it early. Yeah, he was. Uh, and, you know, Mikhail, you, you talked about uh, his post game, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he got Jalen Brown up and under a couple of times. Looked like a little bit of you. <laughs> I worked with him on that move. Now, nah, Kevin's going to have to have a big year for Cleveland to have any success at all. And you're seeing the Celtics here. Who, you know, Hayward, Hayward yeah. yeah, is moving a little bit. But, you know, they, the Celtics didn't look very good tonight. They didn't, they didn't look cohesive on the offensive end. And, boy, you can see there's a lot of work they have to do, in, you know, from now to the start of the season. In fact, Brad Stevens had said at halftime wasn't really happy with the energy level that the, the Celtics were showing on their home floor against Cleveland. And Cavs were able to uh, wear them down. And you, and you saw Colin Sexton, David Waba all contributing down the stretch. You know, and I really like David Waba. I, I mean, his, his energy and, and his effort, you know, is really contagious. And I'm sure it's been contagious throughout camp also. 102 to 95 is your final score. Love with 17, Sexton with 15. Marcus Smart had 15 to lead the Celtics. Any doubt in your mind the Celtics are the favorite to get to the finals out of the Eastern Conference? How much of a threat is a team like Toronto? How much of a threat is Philadelphia? I, I think they're all threats, uh, but I think the Celtics are the favorite because they have the most talent. And they have the most talent, they have a great coach, and they, they're the favorite. Yeah, I agree. I think Toronto can give them a run for their money, though. I, I, I have a big feeling this year that Kawhi Leonard's going to come out and play really, really well after such a disappointing year last year. So Toronto will give them a run for their money, but the Celtics are just too deep. Yeah. Uh, it's almost your answer, almost like we had planned it that way. <laughs> you bring up Toronto and Kawhi Leonard, and we have the highlights of the Raptors and the Utah Jazz from Vivint Smart Home Arena, and Kawhi looking like Kawhi. I mean, he, the way he can fit into Toronto as, you know, his ball handling clearly has improved. You know, we know he's a great defender, but I like what he's going to bring to Toronto from a confidence standpoint. And what I mean by that, they'll walk out on the floor every single night thinking that not only can they win, but defensively they can lock people down. Yeah, and he's got a spot on the floor that, you know, where he's really good, that right box. And this young fella just keeps getting better and better. Spider Mitchell, is his playmaking is improving, and you know he can score the ball. And he says, you know, what he's got to do from, from last year is not run around like a chicken with his head cut off. He <laughs> needs to pace himself a little more, but he knows there's no sneaking up on the league this year. No, there's no sneaking up on the league, and, and you you said the right thing, what he, what he echoed. I can't run around like a chicken with my head cut off. So that just tells me that he's maturing, He's understanding the game, and the game has slowed down from him from an education standpoint. Selfie time uh, on the sidelines for Mitchell, and you saw Ingles knock down the three. He had 24 on the night, uh, 8 out of 15 from the floor. This is a team, the Utah Jazz, that last year got everybody's attention. What's the ceiling for Utah? You know, I, I picked them to, to finish third in the West. I think they'll keep improving. And the reason why I, I think they'll keep improving is because Quinn Snyder, I, I think he's an excellent coach. I think he's, he's got Mitchell, you know, programmed and ready to play the right way. I, I like Gobert coming back as a defensive stopper. So I just like everything that Utah is doing right now. You like Grayson Allen? Yeah, you know what? I, I'm interested to see Grayson Allen and how he plays for this team because they have a lot of playmakers. Rubio makes plays for people. Mitchell makes plays. Ingles is a good playmaker, good mm -hmm. passer. So, you know, I, I'm interested in watching this team blend. And I'm interested in Grayson Allen is such a good athlete. You get up and down. If he runs, I got to believe with it, all those, all those playmakers throwing ahead, he can get some stuff going, yeah. finishing at the basket. And, uh, you know, he had an interesting career at Duke. And I, was, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I want to see what he does in the NBA. And meantime, on, on Toronto's side, Nick Nurse, you're a new head coach in the league. Yeah. You're doing things a little different, a little unique. Because he, one of the things he has, everybody has got to be in a perfect circle when he addresses the team because he wants teammates looking each other in the eye, that kind of thing. They're giving out championship belts during practice, that kind of thing. What works, and how do you decide as a head coach 
What's going to get through to your players? I, I think all of those things are good. Uh, symbolically, they're, they're, they're really good. Um, the, the thing that I worry about is he and, and, and Kawhi Leonard's relationship because Kawhi is coming from, you know, a Hall of Fame coach and, and Greg Popovich, you know, arguably one of the greatest coaches ever in our league. And now he's going to be coached by Nurse. What is that relationship going to be like? And what's the respect level? I know Kawhi will give him the respect, but will Nurse have the ability and will he take on the courage to really coach Kawhi and coach him hard when he needs to be coached hard? Yeah, That's and a good I don't question. know. Ernie, I, never, I never was in a perfect circle once in my career. <laughs> we won a lot. I don't know. I, I'm just not sure. I, 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 I'm not sure what that means, but I, I say next time I coach, we're doing perfect circle. I promise you that. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out for yeah. the Raptors yeah. uh, this year. But when we come back, the highlights from Birmingham. Yes, that's where the Grizzlies and Rockets met on Tuesday night, the Iron City Showdown. Ooh. Highlights next. Sounds. First time they played an NBA game in Birmingham, Alabama since 2006 when the Magic played the Hawks. And tonight you had Mello and the Rockets playing their first game against the Memphis Grizzlies. And right away, our Mello Anthony connecting and all the principal characters getting involved for Houston. I, I mean, I'm I, I, interested to see how Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony are going to, you know, play together. I, I like what I've seen thus far because this is Carmelo Anthony's kind of offense, right? Throw it to me, I shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and throw it to me and I shoot a three. The, uh, I mean, there's a lot of threes going up in that Houston yeah. game. The Rockets put 46 threes in the air in that game. Ooh, big. Nice move. This is big for Memphis if Mike Conley is healthy for a season. It, it's good to see Conley back healthy. And the guy that I'm really interested, the rookie, is, is Jaron Jackson. I, yes, I really like him. I think his upside is, is, is really high. And out of this rookie class, he could turn out to be the best player in this rookie class. Chris Paul with the swipe. And there is Michael Carter-Williams, who had 19. That's a nice pickup because he's just a basketball player. He'll fit in with Houston because he just makes plays and knows how to play. Uh, 131 to 115. Harden had 20. Paul had 22. MCW had his 19. And Houston wins it by 16. Here's what Mello had to say after the game. Things did not go well between Mike D'Antoni and Carmelo Anthony in New York. Why will it work out better in Houston? I think they're not running as much. I think Carmelo never won. You know, back then, Mike D'Antoni had the seven seconds or less offense going. Carmelo wasn't interested in seven seconds or less. <laughs> I said, now Mike D'Antoni's got the seven ball screens or more offense. And so you can kind of walk into your offense. They don't, you know, Houston doesn't push the ball. So I think they'll, I think they'll just automatically get, get along better. He's not always saying run, run, run. And also he's playing with James Harden and Chris Paul. He's going to get a lot of wide open shots. I'm more concerned about Houston on the defensive end. Well, losing Luke Mabute and Trevor Ariza were two really good defenders. Yeah, certainly they got better offensively with Carmelo Anthony. You add to, to what Houston can do offensively. You know, to a team that was a Chris Paul injury away from knocking mm -hmm. off Golden State and going to the finals last year. Is this a better team? It, it, it's a better offensive team. Uh, but I never thought I would see the day where a guy takes a good shot, a two-point shot, and then looks at the bench and goes, Coach, my fault. Hold on. He makes a he shot. Says, he makes yeah, a bad. shot. It yeah, wasn't a challenge three. You know, he's a wide open, two-point shot. He knocks it down, and then he goes, oh, my bad. I, I wasn't supposed to take that shot. Yeah. But this, when you talk about D'Antoni and, and Carmelo Anthony, the thing that I like about both of them is that they're mature guys. Okay, they had their little dust up. But as we know, when you go around the NBA, if you're honest with each other, right, everything works out. I think D'Antoni's honest, Carmelo's honest, and I think they're going to have a good season this year. Moving on to the Miami Heat and the Charlotte Hornets. And Derek Jones Jr., former member of the Phoenix Suns, now with the Heat, and he's got some serious springs, as you see right there. And then he's going to take a tumble as he goes up for a rebound here. Ooh. That is a serious tumble. He... He was uh, taken from the court. X-rays were negative on Derrick Jones Jr. But, man. man, I mean to tell you, that was a tumble. That's Again, X-rays negative.
So we go from that to a possible Shaq and a Fool episode here with Malik Monk waiting to get in the game. He had his warm-up Can't on wait and to he play. took it oh, off. Oh. And there was just my the, uniform, my jersey. Oh, oh a I, matter of a jersey. I, those are the like nightmares you had when you were a kid. Like you didn't have any shorts on, you went into the game. <laughs> man, that just yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah, you rip it away and you yeah. got no oh, man, I got yeah. no shorts on. <laughs> Did that happen? No, but I had nightmares about it already. <laughs> you're, you're watching Miles Bridges, by the way, another top drawer rookie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But this is another rookie, Ernie, yeah. that I, I think everybody's excited about because his preseason has been, you know, must must see highlights. Bridges with 14 on the night. Kemba Walker had 18 for the Hornets in their 122 to 113 win. So much, you know, as you look at Hassan Whiteside having another double double, had a big first game, and he has 14 and 15 in this. So much of what Miami wants to do is predicated on which Hassan Whiteside shows up for this team, Kev? Well, the good Hassan Whiteside is there right now, and he even said, I'm going to be more coachable this right, year. Yeah, right. I like that. You know, he's coming out. Uh, they need him to rebound, and, and, and he's not a great scorer of the ball, but he can rebound, he can block shots, he can protect the rim. He's got to kind of do his job. I think sometimes these guys, they do that really well, then all of a sudden they say, I, I need to take more shots. <laughs> like, no, you don't need to take more shots. Yeah. You need to do what you do well. And they're going to – they play up-tempo a little bit on the offense. Ben Dragic is going to have to score for him. I think that uh, if they can get him, Whiteside, playing really well, they have a chance to be a playoff team. I, I think so, too. And, um, you know, when you, when you look at the job that they did last year and the year before, I mean, this is a team that, that keeps inching its way up. They keep coming. Yep. They keep coming. And Spostra, I, I think these last two years, has done as good a coaching job as he's done all his, his, you know, first five years or first three years there. I mean, when he had LeBron James, you know, D. Wade, you know, Bob I mean, we've seen what type of coach that Spolstra is, and he's an excellent coach, and he's getting the most out of his team. And he's got to be pleased with the work ethic on Whiteside in the offseason. He worked out with Antonio Brown of the Steelers, learned how to – uh, use running on the beach as a way to uh, strengthen uh -oh. his leg. He, what? Uh oh. He, so, so he was working out with Antonio Brown yeah. uh, and one, Andre Drummond and Greg Monroe. That the one who wants the football a little bit more. Yeah. So, so we may see the bad white side who wants the ball a little bit more. <laughs> but he's going to be in better shape. Uh -oh, he's going to uh -oh. be in better shape. Uh -oh. They worked on the attitude on the beach, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to come back here and wrap things up here on Game Time in just a sec. <laughs>